one of the craziest stories you guys are ever gonna hear me tell. He was in such bliss. Oh. He's probably coming. I'm just like, oh. is this person real? I don't know if you guys are ready for what's next. While most people were out spending their New Year's Eve getting shit-faced, I was, unknowing to me at the time, embarking on one of the most intense psychedelic journeys of my entire life. We're talking absolute ego dissolution, ego death. My ego was killed. I haven't had an experience like this in more than five years. <laughs> All of that being said, granted, I'm not upset about the strong experience. It's kind of what I needed. So I don't regret being arrogant going in. In fact, this is one of those instances where my ignorance helped me. Mind you, it was such a challenging experience that I'm going to get into now. And it's one of the craziest stories you guys are ever going to hear me tell. Anyway, let's jump right into this. So this was my second time going to the same ceremony setting. If you watched my ayahuasca video titled, They Gave Me Too Much, that was my first time at this ceremony. So I'm not going to go into the details of what the ceremony is like. If you want to know all of that, then watch the video over here. I will say this time the setup was a little bit better. It was more like a circle. So it actually felt a lot more inviting and warmer. And I much preferred the setup they had this time opposed to the first. It also was less packed. There was, I don't know, maybe less than three fourths the amount of people, which definitely helped. Mind you, the people still really were challenging for me to deal with. Now I need to preface this video uh, with a big apology to those of you who run the ceremony. I think that recently they have learned of my channel, which kind of makes me a little apprehensive to make these videos because as you guys know, I have to be as honest as humanly possible. And it's difficult to be honest about gripes or things that were really challenging, knowing that the facilitators are watching this and knowing I might see them again again and then have to like hold my head in shame being like oh shit I really didn't want them to know my thoughts but it's like I have to be honest so I apologize in advance it's not on you guys I know you guys did your absolute best as well as you humanly could you had facilitators you had the helpers there everything was set up perfectly so I'm, I'm not knocking you guys at all but some of the parts of my story are probably gonna rub you the wrong way so I apologize anyway Anyway, 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 they don't often offer the cacti. They call it wachuma, it is San Pedro cactus. Mescaline containing cacti, as well as other phenethylamine alkaloids, which I'll add to this cocktail, with mescaline being probably the primary alkaloid. But I just want to point out that it's a little bit different than taking extracted mescaline, which is where most of my experience lies. Now going into this, I have a video uh, about two years ago, which is called, we tried a huge dose of the OG psychedelic. And that was an experience where Jasmine and I tried close to 500 milligrams of mescaline hydrochloride. Now this wasn't extracted from cactus, this was synthetic mescaline. So it was of the utmost purity. And I went into this experience actually messaging one of the facilitators stating, I doubt it's going to be anywhere close to 500 milligrams of mescaline hydrochloride. Little did I know this was probably twice as powerful as that. So I was very adamant on giving me the biggest dose possible because I was under the idea that I wasn't going to feel very much because rewind to my last experience taking San Pedro, I didn't feel anything. So I was of the mind, if you don't take a monster dose, nothing's going to happen. And uh, they set it all up. They were like, all right, fine. We're going to give you a big dose. So Jasmine was uh, with me and she made her rules crystal clear this time. She said she didn't want me to touch her. I guess the last time I tried to touch her pissed her off. She said, we're there together, but we're having our own individual experience. And I was like, but what if, you know, one of us needs help? Can we ask the other for help? And she's like, only if you're in the most serious of perils. So I was like, okay, fine. I mean, it's really not how I like to go into these experiences, but I get it. I totally get it. For her, this is individualized self-healing. This is different for her than having a joint experience. Anyway, so that's the preface going into this. We were beside each other. She had a little bit less than me, but still what they called a really high dose. She still had a super intense experience. So that's just some insight into how strong mine was. So we sit down, uh, the main facilitator, like the woman who makes all the brews and who's actually leading the ceremony, they, they sit up front and they play music the whole time. So she comes over and she brings me my little jar and it's filled pretty high with this black liquid. Here you think that it's going to be green like a cactus. Nope, it's black. She brings the black sludge over. She says, I gave you a really high dose. And then on top of the high dose, I added your redose into the entire, into the first dose. So you probably don't need a redose because your first dose plus a redose is all in one. And as you guys know, redosing is nowhere near as strong as if you take it all in one because all in one it's gonna hit you smack in the face all at once like a freight train and i still arrogant adam was like yeah but if i want the redos it's still available she's like yeah it is i'll come in and check on you and i was like perfect so i'm sitting there got a big smile on my face getting all you know hyped up i'm like all right we're gonna do this yeah yeah we're gonna take the cactus let's see if i get some visuals this time <laughs> oh visuals boy was i in for a treat of visuals were what i was after jesus oh my lord 
So <laughs> Jasmine also was very apprehensive of her amount. So she communicates and they told her basically just drink whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, she ended up, you know, she had a jar like this and she left about this much. This, this stuff was strong. So they go through this tapping stuff. This guy leads the charge. And um, to be honest, the way that he did the tapping, I really didn't like. I've done EFT in the past. Great success, emotional freedom technique, I think is what it stands for. And you tap certain points as you focus on accepting a feeling. But this wasn't like that. This wasn't like the usual te technique is like this. He's like, he's like just slapping all over your body. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just like begrudgingly following along thinking, I hate this. Can this be done? So they go through all this relaxation stuff. Then the quintessential Asian guy comes on with his beautiful Asian voice that reminded me of just a Tibetan meditation. And he takes us through a meditation. I was like, all right, I'm on board with this. I can stereotype his Asian voice as being more meditative than the white guy's voice. So I loved it. And now it was time to drink our brew. The black sludge of cacti was about to enter my internal domain, which was about to abolish my ego. So I drank the sludge. It was the most putrid tasting garbage. Well, beautiful garbage that I've ever dropped down my gullet. Like if you think ayahuasca tastes bad, ayahuasca wasn't even as bad as kratom to me. So it goes like ayahuasca, kratom, and then this green sludge. This was like next level. Like I'd rather chill with a liver king and eat eyeballs than drink this. This was so bad, okay? And it was like, it, you're supposed to sip as you go around the circle and share your reason for being there. And I took like a little like, I could dip my tongue out and, and, and Jasmine looks at me after she takes a sip and she's like, mm, how the f are we gonna drink this? And I was like, all right. I know how to deal with this. You just got to down it all in one go, get the torture over within one go, and then you don't have to deal with it over like 20 minutes. So I just decided to chill because you're supposed to be done your cup. You know, you, we want to be part of the ceremony, right? They got this whole plan. Everyone's having a joint shared experience, individual, but together. And, you know, you want to be part of the group. It's all about being part of the group. So I didn't want to like drink mine first. So I waited until everyone went around the circle to down it. And, you know, most people are like, yeah, my name is Evan and I'm here for world peace. It's like, they've just got all these like hippy dippy shit they're saying. Like, yeah, we get it. It's all love. Everybody here is perfect. They don't have any real problems to work through. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be fucking real. So they get to me. I was like, hi, everybody. My name is Adam. And unfortunately, what my body calls to me right now is addiction. And I'm hoping to gain some insight into my addiction personality through this experience. And I think I was the only one to straight up say that I was dealing with some shit. Everyone else, like I said, was just like, yeah, my name is Julie and I'm here to cure world hunger. Like, no, f you, Julie, f world hunger. What are you dealing with right now? Like I'm exaggerating, honestly, I'm exaggerating. But like to me, when I'm just hearing all these people and it's all so positive, like I get it. You want to go into this with a positive mindset, but there's something to be said with being real and raw. So I finally decide to down the liquid. Mm. Oh, the sludge tickles my taste buds as it slowly silks down my throat. And I feel it hit my stomach and it was just like a thump of like I could feel this liquid as soon as it entered me. That sounds wrong. And I immediately like I mean, like almost immediately started to feel a little buzzy. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, f my life. If I'm feeling buzzy already and it's been like 30 seconds, I might be getting more than I bargained for here. So look at my clock. She reads 3.30. Started the experience at 3.30. We're sitting there. And they start to slowly play music. You know, they start with slow songs as they pick up to more, you know, upbeat stuff. It's like real spiritual. And uh, it, there, there's a message though. They actually do have a message. They're trying to impregnate your mind with the idea that you are a powerful creator in charge of your own destiny. <laughs> and you can feel love and, and focus on seeing the beautiful stuff in the world instead of being so tied down, like you're tied in a straight jacket, going insane, constantly devouring this negative garbage that our society is always shoving down our throats. So there's a good message, but of course, me, I'm hearing the message and I'm like, yeah, f this message. My brain just rebels against everything. I'm very rebellious. So if you're trying to like, if I know you're implanting me with positivity, I'm going to purposely try to repel it away, just bounce it off because uh, I want to keep my f negative mindset. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, they're trying to impregnate me to be a good, happy person. And, uh, you know, I can hear it. I can feel it. But I'm looking at my clock and it's been, oh, I don't know, 20 minutes. And this is when I realize that, oh shit, this is going to be a real rough ride. Because when I tried the 500 milligrams mescaline, it was really intense. 
And what got me through the challenging come up was a technique that I couldn't employ here because it involved having sex. <laughs> like Jasmine and I, when we've had tough come ups, we would sometimes have sex because it would help us get out of our minds and into our bodies. So as the mind is dissolving, it was, you know, it was kind of less intense and it gave you something to do and focus on instead of just like sitting there as you melt and become one with the carpet. So I'm not able to employ the usual tactic. I'm just like, all right, and as this is creeping in, it's a slow rise, by the way. Mescon can take up to three hours to kick. So as this is creeping in, I'm starting to feel quite a lot of body discomfort all through my insides. And this is also an indication that it's gonna be powerful because now, I've said before, I'm a baby with this body discomfort. As the body discomfort is accelerating, I am starting to slowly lose my sense of self. Now visuals, I don't really know what's going on at this point because I'm like, I'm just gonna lay the f down and close my eyes. And I'm just starting to remind myself, just breathe, just focus on your breath, this is the trick. And I'm like having this little chatter in my head like, okay, but uh, what are we gonna do if this gets too intense to handle? What exactly is your plan here, bro? I don't know, I guess there's nothing I really can do. We're just gonna sit and breathe, but it hurts to breathe. What if it becomes challenging to breathe? Just gonna really breathe slow and, and just try to breathe around the pain. But what if it becomes too intense to breathe around the pain? What if we gotta puke? I, I guess we're gonna puke, but puking is gonna be too intense in this state. You already don't really like puking. You should probably try to hold it in. I guess we're gonna hold it in and breathe around the pain. So this is the dialogue. I'm like, I don't wanna puke. What if I get too nauseous? Oh my God, this is too much. And I learned later after talking to the facilitator, she's like, she's saying when she's had high doses, she like projectile vomited. Nobody told me this. For They give the ayahuasca people bins for puking in front of them. They gave me no bin. So, and then the music's rising and I'm hearing, uh, uh. like, you know, sometimes you hear like tribal music and there's like, I go, oh, 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 yeah, oh. and so I'm hearing this guy. Oh, and I actually turned to Jasmine. I was like, yo, yo girl, is that, is that part of the song? She's like, what? I'm like that, that, that weird groaning guy. That's part of the music, right? She's like, no, Adam, it's not. I'm like, what? I was so baffled. Like how is his groaning not part of it? And this actually kind of helped because it got my mind off of realizing I was losing my mind. And I'm focusing on this guy's groaning and groaning. And eventually I just hear him sort of and like I can see a couple of helpers run over and they're like patting his head and like hugging him. And I'm like, okay, there's some dude puking. And then I went back to me. And now this is when <laughs> whew, things started to get a little scary. So the, the pain and, and my sense of self just keeps fucking dissolving. More layers go down. Like you can have ego dissolution or ego death to the point where you don't even know language. It was like I was going down the layers. I was losing memories. I was losing my notion of where I was. I slowly started to forget who I was. Every part of my body feel like it was on fire or in some kind of like serious peril. Like I just, I did not feel okay. And there's nothing I could do about it except lay down and try to breathe. So as it's getting more and more intense and like as you're losing your mind, I actually started thinking about instances in the past where like, you know, the time I had to get hold, held down. I'm like, oh my God, what if it gets that bad? You're like, no, 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 you're gonna be fine, man. Just breathe, just breathe. If you need to get held down, there's tons of people here. But what if I try to run out? They'll stop you from leaving. I'm like, okay, okay. So the bases are covered. So I'm like, okay, so I just try to breathe through this. I'm like, I'm just starting to come to grips with the fact that I have no idea where I am. Like this was so strong. DMT trip level strong where you just lose sense of even having a body kind of strong because as it was rising, like we're not even at the peak yet. I'm trying to remind myself like, okay, Adam, no matter how much you forget and keep in mind, it's scary to forget because then you start or you can start thinking, what if I never remember again? Then the fears of going insane creep in and you're like, I, I might never remember who I am ever again. What, what if I'm like this forever? And like, you would think being a seasoned, seasoned with lots of salt and pepper on my beard, veteran over here, I wouldn't face these kinds of fears. But no, no, I mean, anybody is ripe for the picking when it comes to fear. So it's really easy to get swept away in them, like getting swept up in a tsunami and just get smashed across a building and splattered across walls and obliterated. So I'm like trying to breathe. And this is, this is the trick, guys. You have to find something to look forward to. This is one of two tricks. So that's key number one. And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, Adam, Remember you have this superpower, you can always find the silver lining. I'm, I'm like, there is something good here. And keep in mind, the deeper you go, the less you remember that you're having a trip. Like, like you kind of have an inclination that you're going through something, but it can get to the point where you don't even know that you're on a drug anymore. For lack of a better term, it's like being in a dream. When you're dreaming, you don't know you're dreaming. And then when you do know you're dreaming, you usually wake up or you control it and it's less intense. So it's like, you don't really know what's going on. The dream is the drug, the drug is the dream. And so you're going through this and you're trying to find something to look forward to. But when the fear overwhelms you, 
and it feels like it's just gonna tear you apart, it can be really tough to find something to look forward to. And you gotta find one thing. And uh, this is where it's easy to recognize hidden strength because one of two things is gonna happen as the ego dies. And I've, I've done both and believe me, you don't wanna do the latter. One, you find something to look forward to and uh, that gets your mind away from the fear and that catapults you into slowly the snowball builds of being in a positive, joyful journey. The other thing that can happen, this is the one you don't want that I've also done, is you latch on to the fear. And keep in mind where energy flows, thoughts go. No, where thoughts go, energy flows. So as your thoughts obsess over fear, or not even obsess, as your thoughts start to just crawl towards scary stuff, like like things like, what if I go insane? What if I never come back? It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can get to the point where this is when you start screaming. This is when you might get up and like rip your clothes off and do something just totally outlandish. And like, this is when shit really hits the fan. If you go to the ladder, if you follow the fear. So this is the key to not follow the fear, find one good thing. And the good thing can be as simple as this doesn't last forever. And that's enough because that's one good thing, which will lead to another good thing, another good thought, which will lead to more good thoughts. And it's really difficult if you have an OCD style mind like mine, because I will start playing tricks on myself. I started to think, what do you think would happen if you start thinking about something scary right now? Let's think about the scariest thing. What if all these people in this room stand up, look at you and decide it's time to kill you? How are you gonna defend yourself in this situation? You can barely stand up. You can't defend yourself. What if you have to defend your partner in this situation? It's like, wait, I have a partner? Holy shit. Turn my head, look at Jasmine and I'm like, uh, who's this person sitting beside me? Hmm. This got my mind off the fact that I had no mind. So I'm actually, I remember this vividly. I'm looking at her and her face is being constructed and deconstructed over and over again, right in front of me. It was like, I could see the cosmic paintbrush drawing her into the fabric of existence as I'm trying to figure out who the f she is. So I remember looking at her lips. I'm like, whose lips are those? Are those my mom's lips? I'm like, yeah, it kind of looks like my mom. <laughs> No, no, no. She could have been my mom, my sister, my aunt, my daughter. I had no idea. I just had an inclining that this human beside me loved me sometimes. No, I'm just being mean. I'm honestly just trying to be a dick. But that was that was honestly the vibes I come in. Like I'm coming in there and she's like, don't even touch me. Don't look at me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, so I was a little, <laughs> I'm, I'm realizing that this is this is someone that I know. Okay, I know that much. So I decided to let that go. You know, it's enough for me that I that I kind of know who that is and and they're non hostile style. So drop it, drop it like it's hot, move back to myself, get reminded that my body is in extreme pain and I can't move. And this is the second trick to making it through eagle death. I mean, ego death. I'm just making jokes. This is an online joke that it's, oh, to kill your eagle. Ha ha ha. Sounds funny, but when you're in it, oh my God, it's the scariest thing ever. Anyway, the next trick is the breath and not moving. So it's focusing on the breathing as you're focusing on being as still as a bored. Okay. And this is very important. I look at my watch and I was like, oh, we're like two and a half hours in. <laughs> it's, you're not going to peak till three or four hours in. I was like, holy f Lord and savior of Moses, come down from Nazareth and save me. So I lay down and uh, the panic, it starts to rise again. <sighs> Take some deep breaths. I'm like, oh, the more I move and try to like control my body, the more I am imparting my ego power. And when the ego is trying to die, the last thing you wanna do is be in the ego space. You want to let go fully. You know, there's that saying, like you've gotta release and let go in order to really not even get the most of these experiences, but sometimes make them through unscathed. So how do you fully let go? Well, you have to commit to no movement because again, it, say I'm right here, I'm laying down, but I'm laying down, who's doing this, right? Like ask yourself, who's commanding my hand? I am, who am I? I am the ego, I am the self. So once you commit to actually literally doing nothing to the point of committing to not even breathe consciously, that's when you start to relax because that's when you realize you actually do have control. Now, what makes these experiences so freaky is the complete lack of control. Like you can't even control your mind anymore. It gets really scary because you're like, well, like, what can I control? And that's when people really lose it. So in letting go of control, you regain some control. 
I get it. You know, it's a little, yeah, it's, I know it's a little weird, but that's how it works. So I let go and I was like, just don't move, don't even move. And then my mind starts to wander into, what is breathing? Like I'm hitting like all the levels of ego death here because the next level is when you forget that humans have to breathe to exist. I'm like, what am I, what's this thing that I'm doing? Then I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if I actively decide to stop? So now I'm consciously deciding to stop breathing consciously. And then, then this is what the body does. It almost feels like you're in that theta state between being awake and being asleep. And I'm just observing my body start going like. And that's when I finally felt some calmness wash over me. I was like, oh. So the body will keep, that's keeping me alive. That's keeping me here. And my body will do that by itself. But I kept get forgetting that it would breathe by itself. And this goes on for probably 30 minutes where I'm just breath. And in between realizing that I didn't have to consciously breathe, I was going somewhere else. As soon as I allowed the body to breathe on its own, I was getting like pulled out of this dimension. And I, this is the part that's ineffable. Ineffable means there's no language to describe it because I was f traveling somewhere, man. This is when somebody from the ceremony decided that they wanted to help me. Great, just what I need, I need help. Because I'm sure I looked crazy, because you know, I, I was laying down and then um, every once in a while I would be like, okay, I need a break from this. And I would like pop up, look at my watch, look around, probably looked like deer in the headlights, like oh. And every time I do that, it would be like three minutes had passed. But to me, I felt like it was an hour. Time was inching along like a inchworm. At one point, I remember getting up and be like, oh my God, it's been five minutes. I just need a break. And then I started thinking, how can I just get a breather from this? And then my mind went, well, what if I consciously get up and move around? Then I'm like demanding control. But then I'm like, no, no, don't do that. That might get scary. You're, you're taking the reins. I, I don't know if the experience is going to allow this without launching you into terror. And then this, uh, this woman who I couldn't tell if she was old or not, turns out after she was like in her fifties, this is how I couldn't even see right. Like everything was made out of either little eyeballs or this like swirling geometric patterns in front of me. Like nothing looked like it should. So this lady, comes and sits down and she sits right beside me. I was so confused. Like I, I remember looking at her. Is she real? Is, is there an actual human beside me or am I dreaming this up? And I'd look at, look at Jasmine. Jasmine wasn't, she wasn't not as, she did about half as much as me. Okay. She was not as far gone as me. She, you know, she's getting up dancing. She'd sit down. She would do some stretches for a lot, get up, move. So I'm looking at Jasmine. I think she's doing some stretch. And then I look over at this, this woman beside me and this is, and she's like this. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm just gonna look ahead now. Look back at Jasmine. I'm just trying to like, I'm looking at Jasmine for cues. Like, please help me. Is, is this person beside me real? And then look ahead, look back. And she's just like this. I'm like, oh my God, this person's real. Then she slowly extends her hands. And, opens them. and I'm like, oh, she's got something for me. Okay, she wanted to give me a gift. So I, I grabbed these two smooth yet sharp objects out of her hands. And like, this is a testament to just how deep I was into the abyss. Cause I'm like, what the f are these? It, I swear to God, it took me a solid minute. I mean, what felt like a minute, could have been 10 seconds to decipher that, oh, she gave me some crystals. I was like, Man, it, it took so long just to remember what this object was. Like, it's like you're a baby and like babies don't know words. And when you don't know words, Oh my God, the world is interpreted so differently. The words solidify objects into boxes, which forces our brain to view them a specific way. But when the word is removed, it could be anything. And, and I mean that like visually, metaphorically on all levels. And it's this is what makes these experiences so spiritual and so breathtaking because it allows you to truly observe and feel reality, how it was probably meant to be felt before humans came along and used language to cast a spell on everything, making it what it appears to be. We don't realize just how powerful language is. So I see the crystals, I give them back to her, she holds them again, and then she leans in, okay, she leans in and she says to me, I swear this is what I heard, I don't think this is what she said. I look at her and she's like, I am your addiction. I was like, what the f That's what I heard. I heard her say she was my addiction. And I was like, my addiction has become personified, it's embodied, as, as an, as I think she's old. I don't even know if she's old because I can't really see her face. It's made out of shapes. Woman beside me? Okay. And, and I, at this point, I was so gone. I, I didn't know what, what addiction. Like, I, I didn't, 
I don't have memories, man. I don't even know who my goddamn partner is. I don't know what she's talking about. I, I get she wanted to help, but I had no idea. And then she's got this uh, this oil spray and she's doing this. But I can like, I can feel the energy and the smell. Like all your senses are so exaggerated. It's like, as soon as you focus on one thing, it just becomes your everything. Like you are just the smell and she's spraying it. And I can feel myself do this as she's spraying it. And she probably, she's all probably in her head like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm getting rid of his addiction. And then I remember I laid down, <laughs> laying on my side and uh, I'm just like, oh, oh. and she's like spraying me with this thing. And I'm, and I'm starting thinking like, what is this supposed to do? This is too much. <laughs> and then I just lay down close my eyes for a little while. I don't know where the hell I went. I just remember I opened them, sit back up and she's still there. I look over at Jasmine and I think Jasmine's looking at her now and um, she hands Jasmine some crystals and Jasmine's like, oh, those are pretty. Thank you. Like, oh, Jasmine can still talk. Okay. Thinking, am I supposed to communicate? So I turned to her. I was like, hi. And she looks at me. She goes, shh. I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're not supposed to talk. I don't know what this lady was doing, but she lingered. And I was just at times just staring at her like this, like a, like a psychopath. Because I'm thinking still. Is this person real? And there's both of us, like in that anime scene, like where their eyes are have lightning shooting out, and it's going, Psh! and like the versus sequence, we're both like this. <laughs> oh. Finally, she gets up and stretches. And keep in mind when she said, I am your addiction, now I'm starting to remember like, oh, there's male and female. There's something called sex. I'm like, what, what is, this, is, this is not my sexual addiction. Oh, is that what she means? It's like, no way. I'm like, no offense, she's an old lady. I'm like, what, what is this? No. She looks at me and she says something and I, I still don't know what she said. I heard you're clueless. That's what I heard. There's no way she looked at me and said, you're clueless. But um, I wasn't hearing things right, just to be honest. I really don't think that's what she said. I'm just thinking, yep, I'm clueless. Don't even know my name. Totally f***ing brain dead over here. So she goes away and uh, I know she tried to help and maybe she did help with that oil spray, but as soon as she left, it's like I could relax. It was an interesting experience and I wouldn't do it differently next time. I think it, it was great, but it was like, I definitely felt some relief because then I could go back to just laying down motionless. And at this point I'm thinking, okay, Okay, I, I, need, I need a break from this intensity. Like you gotta understand when you're having a challenging experience, there's two kinds of experience, there's multiple, but these the two types that a lot of people have is either it's really challenging or they're in absolute bliss. And I was not in bliss. And when you're in the challenging one, where it's like you feel the physical pain, scary thoughts, it takes a lot of resilience. To, what I didn't say is mescaline can last 18 hours. It's one of the longest lasting psychedelics. And uh, like I said, three minutes at one point was like an eternity. I just remember feeling like I needed a break, but I was really grateful that it was showing me how resilient I was. Because like, if you can make it through an ego death by just breathing, and it sounds easy, but it is so much harder than it sounds because you feel like you're dying. It's like your instinct when you're dying is to get up and fight fight the darkness, battle to stay alive. And so it goes against your natural instinct to just like, I'm just gonna breathe. But I had had enough. I looked at my watch, it had been, I don't know, three or four hours. And I came to the conclusion that if I got up and moved, I would get the break that I was looking for. So I remember I, I hopped up, could barely stand. And I wobbled my way over to like in the back corner, like there's there's some uh, windows that you can see outside. Oh, I hobbled my way over and oh my God, this is a great example of how when you think you're getting a hold on things, something can happen in your environment and it can just sweep the carpet out from under you. And so I'm, I'm walking and uh, something that grounds me that a lot of people don't like is the mirror. It's always grounded me. I've had intense experiences in the mirror, but it's like, if I don't know anything, if I can recognize at least my reflection, it's calming. So I remember I go to the bathroom, it's all candlelit. There's no light. They don't want you to turn the light on. I look in the mirror. It almost looked like as I looked, I watched all of the particles form together to build me. It's hard to describe what you're made of because it doesn't look like skin. It's almost like you can see the glowing molecules as they're kind of like wobbling around. It's beautiful. It's insanely cool looking, but you can't really appreciate the beauty because there's the other things like the ego has gone. I see my reflection. I'm just like, oh, thank God. I know that guy. I smile at myself. I'm like, I actually point. I was like, I know you. <laughs> yeah, we've been through a lot together. Okay. So I'm like, mm, I can do this. Like I actually felt some confidence because as I was laying down battling with not knowing anything, it was like a constant reminder because I'm forgetting everything. I'm forgetting. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm breathing. Why am I breathing? Why don't I remember anything? Will I ever remember it again? You're like looping through these thoughts almost. And then in between the loops, you go to like deep, like otherworldly dimensions and you're like shown life lessons. But it's like, as you snap out of it, I would be back in this like constant stage of having to reassure myself. And sometimes you can get tricked into thinking that it's fading. And when it's that intense for so long, well, you can have life-changing insight. It takes a lot of energy 
to stay in it. So it's like, you need the breaks. And so anyway, I was like, okay, I'm good. I, I felt, I wouldn't say like totally reassured that I was going to make it like as I'm telling you that like I'm breathing and I'm proud of myself working through it, but I still felt like I had no guarantee that I was going to be calm and collected the entire time. I'm still feeling like at any moment, I'm one wrong thought away from catapulting me into pure sanity and needing help. So I, you know, stumble out of the bathroom and I decide, oh, let's go look out the window. <sighs> I don't know if you guys are ready for what's next. And I apologize to the facilitators. This is not a knock on you. I mean, I understand this is just what happens at these events, but I have to be honest and share my experience. And there's this old 70 year old man, right where the windows are, or the rooms with the windows. And he's got his hands up like this. I don't think he's looking at me. He's just looking out into nothing. He's going, oh, 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 oh. As his like hands are like vibrating. It looked like they put him in the corner so he could orgasm alone. Like he was in such bliss, he's probably coming. I mean, that's what it sounded like to me. And I'm, I smile at him. Like, keep in mind, I've lost my mind. So my eyes are probably like this. I'm creeping by. I'm like looking at him. He looks at me like this. Oh, I'm just like, okay, this is scary. I'm going to go the other way. And I quickly darted back to my seat. And then this is a great example of how you can be programmed by your environment to enter states of fear that would not have happened otherwise. I'm starting to think, okay. What if this entire thing turns into this giant fucking orgy? Do I have the wherewithal to be able to grab my partner and exit? What if they get physical in more ways than one and try to keep us here? And I'm like, I did not sign up for no orgy, okay? I signed up to have a deep trip. I'm not going there, no way. So again, I had to lay down, take some breaths, calm myself, reassure myself that I'm going to be okay. These are just crazy thoughts. Like I had a really good ability to um, have an outlandish thought, but then pull myself back. So I sat back down probably four or five hours in at this point, still going so strong. I, I, I can't really describe some of the stuff that happened next. I forgot a little bit, but I do remember at one point I was really losing it and I, I turned to Jasmine and I was like, okay, maybe I can talk to her now. And I was like, I don't know about you, but I am really gone. And she's like, good for you. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, I don't know if it's a good thing. I said, can you help ground me? Because now now I remembered who she was again. And uh, so she held my hand for a minute. She sat, looked at me. We took some breaths together. It, it was helpful. So I appreciated that. So as I'm still like breathing through the ego death, I, I'm slowly having more waves where it's like relaxing and, and I'm coming back. And uh, so she, this is when she would lay and she started to cuddle with me. And it felt really nice, to be honest, after going through such a harrowing journey to have somebody just like, you know, hold me and cuddle me. I swear to God, every time she would cuddle me and there was other couples there. It, it's not like we were the only ones. One of the helpers would come and literally sit like your mats are really close and there was about this much space between me and the person's mat beside me they would come and sit in that space every time and then jasmine would pull back and stop cuddling my eyes would like dart to this person I was like what the fuck are they doing why are they fucking with my journey here and then they get up and they'd leave and then you know maybe 20 minutes later jasmine would turn and want to cuddle again sure enough another person would come over and it's, it's either a coincidence or they were doing it on purpose which i can understand they probably are just trying to make sure that we're just like hugging as to not obviously make other people in these deep experiences uncomfortable. Like I, after seeing the old man, like I totally get it. I'm not upset about it, but I don't know. In, in that experience, it felt intrusive. Now in this state, I do want to point out that I could feel everybody's energy so intensely. It was almost like, keep, this could all be in my head, keep in mind, could all be in my mind, but I felt like I could get readings on people just from feeling their auras, like just being close to them. Like I could feel, you know, what kind of person they were. Is this a good person? What are their, their intentions in this moment? And um, I was starting to get some weird vibes from some of the people there, not just the old man orgasming in the corner. Oh. Anyway, it kind of just went on like this until they wrapped it up. I knew it was starting to wane. This is about five or six hours in when the discomfort turned to gas pain. And like, it's so weird, but when you're in this state, a little bit of gas pain feels like the most painful thing ever. Everything is so heightened. Like a little bit of gas feels like someone's stabbing you with it. I can't imagine what real pain would be like. Holy shit. Anyway, so now we're like six hours in and it's actually time for them to wrap it up. It's almost 12 and they've got a room with food. And keep in mind, a lot of the people there are on ayahuasca, which only lasts like four to six hours. So a lot of the ayahuasca people are coming down. Meanwhile, I'm on the highest dose of San Pedro in the entire building at the time, okay? And I was not gonna be coming down for like another seven hours at least. So I'm actually just hitting the point where it's like it's manageable for me, okay? And uh, Jasmine was much more with it than I was. Again, she had about half as much as me, uh, which is understandable. I'm glad she didn't have as intense of an experience as me. Anyway, so remember I get up, moving around, decided I was gonna try to eat something. The food made the pain worse so I could barely eat. And uh, you know, I just kind of wandered around until I was able to communicate more. And 
actually the woman who hosts it, who made all the brews, she comes over and sits with me. And I think we chatted for, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour. My sense of time was so bad there, but we were talking for a long time. And the first thing she says to me is like, she's like, so how was it? I was like, that was intense so humbling and intense. And she's like, yeah, well, I warned you. I was like, you did warn me. And I arrogantly had to do it my way. And I was like, but I don't regret it. I don't regret any of that. That was probably exactly what I needed. And we started talking about her background and uh, how she got into doing this and, you know, the bruise. And it was really interesting. It was honestly really interesting. And she was really cool. I really enjoyed talking to her. It makes the experience feel a lot more welcoming when you sit down and you like get to know kind of like the leader. You know, it, it's more comforting. And uh, she was she was older, but um, she kind of talked like a kid, which was amusing to me. Anyway, we chatted for a while. And uh, that, that about wraps up the experience. I came home and I think I was still high into the next morning. Yeah, so I took it at 3.30 and I think I was still feeling some lingering effects until like 12 or 1 the next day. It lasted a long time. And this has been a long video. And I'm sure I missed so much because it's, it was such a deep experience. Now, takeaways from this, just to summarize, same with the ayahuasca, only this was to the next level. I feel like I have a superpower. I know that sounds arrogant. Like, I thought these experiences were supposed to kill the ego and humble you. And here this mother f comes out saying as a superpower. But this is like what I needed to realize. I needed to realize my ability to see things for the good in them. There was a whole part that I forgot to tell where I was going through it and I was realizing that no matter which way you see it, like you're gonna get whatever you look for. If you want stuff to complain about, you're always gonna find stuff to complain about. If you want stuff to be appreciative for and to be grateful for and, and to be excited about, that's there too. But looking at it, doesn't circumvent or supersede the negative stuff. The negative stuff will always be there, but it's up to you to deliberately decide where you want your attention to be placed. And I realize I put so much attention on the negative stuff, which just makes it bigger. Like that experience is an exaggeration of real life. Even in real life, what you focus on grows, expands, becomes all you can see. And I spend so much time focusing on negatives and things to complain about. I'm a complaining master, okay? The f master complain artist over here. And I realized that I wanna stop doing that because these experiences show you that if you don't focus on the good, even when you're going through something bad, you're gonna lose your mind. Like simply put, you're gonna lose your f mind. You're gonna go insane. And so many people do lose it and they never find any resemblance of happiness in their f whole, whole existence. They're always complaining. And that, that's honestly been me for a lot of the time. I've lived it both ways. And I'm telling you, life, is so much more worth the squeeze when you decide it's a decision you make to see the good in every experience instead of always sitting in the murky, disgusting waters of the bad. Like, let's go for a swim in some clean water and just feel it, you know, and, and just embrace it and be grateful for the little things. And that's what this showed me, really. Even in the deepest, darkest moments, I have this superpower to always find something good. And we all do. Okay, this is where it's like, it's not just about my ego. All of us do. It's the good and the bad are always there. You just have to decide to see and then let it in. <sighs> I know I sound like some hippy dippy woo woo bullshit f dude over here, but you know, that's what this experience really ultimately showed me. And once again, it showed me my strength. It showed me my resilience. I, I, I can't believe that I held it together. So reassuring to know that even when it was so challenging, I thought I, I was gonna f implode. I was able to breathe through it. And, and I was able to bring back these lessons to share with all of you guys that find something positive, even if it's just, this will end soon, and focus on the breath while releasing your urge to even move. Make it your mission to just breathe in and out slowly and be motionless. And I swear to God, if you can do those three things, you can make it through any psychedelic trip. Any, I don't care how intense, because the worst that happens is you lose your ability to move. And if you've already agreed not to move and you're just gonna breathe, that's the worst that's gonna happen anyway. You're good, dog. You are good. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, gently, don't smash, just gently tap the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Head on over to psychsubstance.shop. Pick up one of our super soft trip blankets. Head on over to Patreon to see the uncut version of this. If you want full uncensored videos, you got to subscribe to Patreon. Only $2 a month gets you there. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Cheers. I'm out.